today. Stadia is officially dead. RTX 4090 will decimate your wallet. First RTX 4090 benchmarks, and AMD's secret weapon has been confirmed. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. First I'm up for shocked. today, it shocked. happened. Google has officially killed yet another product, adding to the long list of projects the company has ended over the years. This time, it's Stadia, the game streaming service that probably had more initial hype behind it than any that I've seen in recent memory. Of course, this isn't too much of a surprise after Google closed their Stadia game studio just last year. Then again, Google was promising they'd stick to it, even stating that more games were coming to the platform, which really just makes this a good reminder to not believe everything companies say. One thing to think about are the many recent cloud-based handheld devices, like the recently announced Logitech G Cloud Gaming that was promising support for Stadia. I wonder if Google didn't ouch. tell them until they told everyone else. Very ouch. With this, you may be wondering what's going to happen to the games you bought. Unfortunately, Stadia is set to go offline on January 18, 2023, which means no more access to your games. Luckily, Google is offering refunds to those who purchase software or hardware through the Play Store, but this is a hard reminder of the downside of streaming content. You don't technically own that media, so it can be taken away at any time. Either way, it's yet another game streaming service to bite the dust, proving yet again that it's not an easy task, especially when a multi-billion dollar tech company can't get it right. One thing that won't go away anytime soon is computer science. Actually, it's getting a lot bigger, so learn the field the right way with this video's sponsor. Brilliant! the online learning platform that was built to teach the STEM field. But the biggest thing is that they actually teach you by having you do it yourself. And that's why I really can't recommend them enough. See, they use these really cool puzzles that make you actually do what you're learning, which makes it way more interactive and easier to learn the concepts. So you're not just memorizing stuff, you're actually learning. And they've got something for everyone. Whether you're just getting into the field with more basic classes, or you're looking to expand your knowledge with things like quantum computing or neural networks. But don't just take my word for it, because you can try out Brilliant for free when you visit brilliant.org slash gamermelt. Plus the first 200 who sign up using my link will get 20% off the annual premium. Once again, that's brilliant.org slash gamermelt. Next up, while NVIDIA's RTX 4090 has gotten a ton of flack for its insane pricing, it actually gets a lot worse. For starters, in the US, Newegg has begun showing pricing on the upcoming cards. And as you can see, they go up to an unbelievable two grand. And sure, they do have options at MSRP, which would be a good sign if MSRP wasn't so absurd to begin with. I mean, that $1,600 price point is likely due to expectations of the shortage by NVIDIA. So pretending like it's a great thing that this GPU's at MSRP just doesn't sit well. Unfortunately, the prices get even worse when we move to Europe, as one of the main retailers, ProShop, just listed prices of their cards. And as you can see, they start at a whopping 2,000 euros, and they go all the way up to 2,550 euros, making these the cost of a very nice system from just a few years ago. Basically, NVIDIA's RTX 4090 is a massive leap in price, even more so than you likely thought when it was announced. Of course, it may end up being worth it for some given the performance. <laughs> Probably not. And luckily, we have our first look at that thanks to a new video from Digital Foundry, who got an exclusive look at the RTX 4090. Unfortunately, it's only a look at performance with DLSS 3.0, which really makes me think the native rasterized performance of the 4090 isn't nearly as good as NVIDIA originally claimed. For rasterized games, ADA is up to two times faster. I mean, DLSS 3.0 is exclusive to the RTX 4000 series, but it's still just upscaling from a lower resolution, and it has to be coded into the game, so not all games will support it, which means the real performance without upscaling is important. Still, it's interesting to finally see some third-party benchmarks. Among the games they got to test were Cyberpunk 2077, Spider-Man Remastered, and Portal RTX, and as you can see, the performance boost is definitely 
really good. While they weren't able to show frame rates, they could show the percentage increase. So games get anywhere from two to even five times the performance boost when compared to native resolution. Of course, that five times boost is specifically in Portal RTX, which was definitely done with a ton of input by Nvidia. Really, all of these likely were, given they're some of the first to get DLSS 3.0, so I'd personally wait for reviews. One thing a lot of people have been concerned about is latency, and the reason for that is because DLSS 3.0 is having to generate the entire frame, so masking can't happen, and using optical flow analysis for the rest can add latency. But Nvidia claims that their tech called Reflex can solve this, and according to Digital Foundry, it is higher than DLSS 2.0, but it's still lower than native resolution. At the end of the day, NVIDIA's 4090 with DLSS 3.0 does look interesting, but with prices up to two grand, it better be amazing. And lastly for today, with Intel's 13th gen official, AMD looks to have some huge plans to come back even harder than Ryzen 7000. In a newly leaked image, where AMD was apparently updating partners on future products, we can see they shared a roadmap, and in it we get a few things. For one, AMD confirms that next gen Threadripper is coming in 2023. Next, it looks like AMD is actually going to keep selling Ryzen 5000 parts all the way into 2023, likely as budget CPUs with their AM4 platform. Next, we can see that they did confirm it. Ryzen 7000 X3D. Of course, we saw Zen 4 X3D before, but now we know that it is Ryzen 7000. Here it says to be announced, but given this, they seem like they're set to come either later this year or sometime next year. Personally, I think it'll be interesting to see what kind of performance AMD can bring to the table with X3D on Ryzen 7000, especially given it will be their second iteration of the tech. Maybe we can overclock some things? I'm not sure, but it will likely be AMD's answer to Intel's 6 GHz 13th Gen part. Finally, we can see that AMD plans to release a new series of desktop APUs in 2023, and they're apparently going to keep selling their 4000 and 5000 parts along with it. It'll be really interesting to see these with RDNA 3, if that ends up happening. So while that does it for today, are you pumped for AMD's next-gen X3D, or are you excited for NVIDIA's RTX 4000? Let me know down in the comments below. And don't forget to check out Brilliant at brilliant.org slash gamermelt. And as always, have a great day!